Well, folks, Antonio T. Smith Jr. is doing it again. He's done it again. Yes, he has. Giving away so much knowledge just to help you succeed. Walk out of the middle class. Become a multimillionaire. He is giving away his book just for you. The name of that book? The Richest Man in the Trash Can. You want to make sure you get this book. Here's why. If you are someone who is tired, frustrated, irritated of the day-to-day schedule of waking up, going to work, going back home, going to sleep just to do it all over again, not being able to spend time with your family, you just got married, you just had kids, or you take care of your parents and you're not there to do it, this is the book for you. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this book is free 99. Yes, you heard me. Free 99. Okay? <laughs> All you for free. Yes. Free 99. All you have to do is just pay shipping and handling. That's it. $9.95 just to get your free book. This book is a life changer. I'm trying to tell you guys everything in this book is what Antonio taught myself in grace that enabled us to retire. Yes, we are retired and we haven't even hit our 40s yet. Woo! I'm just saying. I got a few months to go. Don't worry about it. Shh. Don't nobody need to know that, girl. (laughs) You don't look it. That's it. Go get it. Go get it and walk yourself out of the middle class into the life you deserve. Walk yourself into abundance. Abundance is freedom and this book is your journey out. You can plant better. You can dominate. Hello, Secret to Success audience. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have an amazing woman with me today, Miss Jessica Zimmerman. You guys are in for a treat. So now I'm going to introduce her. Thank you so much for joining us, Miss Jessica. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, ma'am. And we're excited to have you. So, Miss Jessica, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and what it is that you do? Gosh, well, um, I live in a, a small town in Arkansas. And I basically, I just always knew I wanted to own my own business. I was in a car accident with my sister when I was three years old. She was eight and she died in the car accident. And I was the one who survived. And I kind of, you know, people always say life is short or live live each day like it's your last one. Mm -hmm. And I really know that to my core. Like I've, I don't remember a day of my entire life not feeling that way, you know, not knowing how precious life is because my, my sister, my best friend, uh, you know, was taken so quickly. And my mom was a very present mom. Um, I, I, after my sister died, I was her only one left. And so she kind of poured all her energy into me. When I went off to college, I just saw how difficult that was for my mom. Um, she was a stay at home mom. She, like I said, she, was devoted to me and I was basically her job, you know, to, to raise me. And when I was gone, I just saw that that was so difficult. And I thought, you know, I want to be as present of a mom for my children one day as my mom was for me, but I also need something that is just mine and that's okay. And the only way that I knew how to do that was to, was to own my own business. And I didn't care what that was. I would have sold knives for a living. I almost did. Um, and I just, uh, the long and short of it is I got, I got the opportunity to buy a wedding rental business and I kind of floundered at that for a few years, almost <laughs> went bankrupt and decided to get a hundred thousand dollar loan to turn my business around. And it basically gave me time which was uh, what I needed. I needed time to kind of let my business survive while I went and learned everything that I could about the foundation of business. Mm -hmm. You know, I read my boys. um, They love the book, The Three Little Pigs. I have four-year-old twin (laughs) boys. And I, you know, it's, you you can build a house of straw. You can build a house of, of sticks. You can build a house of brick. And my found, my business was not built with a brick foundation. It was, uh, every time I kind of got a little bit ahead, a wind would come and it would blow everything down at the sticks or the straw or whatever, you know, the metaphor we want to use. And I'd have to keep, I'd have to start all over again. And so I was just on this hamster wheel all the time. I wasn't making a dime. I didn't bring home a penny. Um, and I was working 16 hours a day 
And I thought, this isn't really what I wanted. This isn't really what I signed up for <laughs> when I thought I was going to do this. And so I just took that $100,000 loan, bought myself some time, built my business foundation with brick, a, a good solid foundation. And I very quickly started bringing in a six figure salary. Um, I, you know, a couple years after that, I had a seven figure year. And um, during the midst of that, my husband got really ill. My husband was the one who took care of us, right, for 11 years. And I didn't bring home a penny for those 11 years. And then after he got sick, I kind of had to pull up, you know, <laughs> my bootstraps and and really kind of turn this hobby business, if you will, into a real capital B business. And I did it. And I just wrote a book about kind of the personal side of that. It's called Sleeping with a Stranger. I think we're really uh, quick to, to put out there, oh, hey, you, if you do these things, you can work four hours a day and make six figures and travel the world with your family. But really, like, what's going on behind the scenes in your personal mm -hmm. life that allows you to do that? And that is what Sleeping with a Stranger is all about. Awesome. Thank you so much. You... You said so much already. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to give a brief intro. I, it really is. <laughs> no, it was it was wonderful because you you just in your intro alone you touched on a lot of things. The first thing is life is extremely valuable. Number one, number two, wanting something for yourself. Number three, how being an entrepreneur is not what we think it is until we actually get into it <laughs> the truth yes and then the fourth thing is the personal the personal aspect of the entrepreneurial journey mm. you know um so the first question that i want to ask you is with with you building with everything going on how how did you do that balance of home starting literally starting from not starting from scratch but starting from scratch with your business and being able to have it all together and, and how you put it is um, balance the hustle the home health and hibernation how 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 where, where did that begin and what what drove you to that point that's a great question and the honest answer is fear is what drove me um, the, you know, now I come from a very different place. I've done a lot of work on myself to recognize what really happened. Sorry, let me, I don't know why that just did that. Um, so I did a lot of work on myself to kind of realize why I was operating from a place of fear. And really what happened was when my husband got sick, um, we couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. He was in and out of the hospital and I knew that he could lose his job any day and cause he was a financial advisor and he worked off of commission. And if, you know, if he can't work, if he can't be out there taking meetings, then how can he bring home any money? Mm -hmm. And so first it was a fear of, Oh no, how are we going to, you know, pay our bills? How am I going to, at that point I had a daughter who wasn't even two years old and I had newborn twin boys. Um, wow. And mind you, I'd never brought home a penny before ever. And so there was that fear. Then there was the fear of Brian, my husband, what if he dies? Like, what if he dies like my sister died? No wow. one in my life has ever been as close to me as my sister other than Brian. And so what, you know, and I almost thought, well, if I can get everything handled, then he'll get better, you know, or something. I just, I was kind of just operating from a place of fear. And I thought if I can just get my business off the ground, it'll be fine. And so I had to go get the loan because there was no other way. I realized I had, I just needed time. If I could buy myself four to six months of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. I took, I think a couple days a week off completely to just um, work on my business. And I learned from, from mentors. I read a ton of books. I went to workshops. I met with financial advisors and, and bookkeepers and, you know, uh, CPAs. I met with all kinds of people and I just absorbed everything that I could to learn the foundation of business. And once I started putting that into place, you know, things, uh, I realized 
it's I'm not it's not easy. I'm not gonna say it's easy by <laughs> any means, but it's simple. None mm-hmm. of this was rocket science. You know, it was it was really simple steps that I needed to take. Um, you know, and you can only kind of set all those things up if you give yourself the time to do it. Otherwise, I mean, just the simplest things, like for example, an onboarding process, right? For a client. So a client, you know, uh, finds you on your website and they contact you via email. What is the system that happens after that? Well, for me, I was personally doing all of that, like personally emailing a brand new email every time. I had zero templates. I didn't have like a, a calendar link on my website for, for people mm. to, to book. You know, I didn't have media kits or a video that showed what we did, you know, any of that. And so just taking the time to do that, I mean, that upped my sales and that got me way better, you know, uh, not better, but, but bigger budget clients mm. so that I could, you know, work less and, and make more, which is always the goal. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. I just, it really kind of stemmed from fear. And then once I, you know, once we got Brian healthy and once I wrote sleeping with a stranger, I was able to really kind of put that chapter aside and really heal from it. And now I just really operate from a place of gratitude and I take care of myself first every day. And when I do that, I kind of fill myself up to where I'm able to give the best of me. Um, to my family and to my work. And I don't look at it as selfish. I look, I think self-care is, is honestly the, the most selfless thing that you can do because you're able to give your best self to people. Um, I think I really took time to kind of create boundaries. That was really big. Um, I went from working 16 hour days to working six hour days. So when you're just working six hour days, you become a master at efficiency. You don't have time to mindlessly scroll or to be on email all day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I dedicate about 30 minutes a day to email because I need to get my own work done. And email is a very reactive thing where you're just constantly, you know, solving other people's problems versus, um, you know, solving your own. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And it, it there's something that you said in there that you also mentioned in one of your blogs, the lonely side of entrepreneurship. You talked about setting boundaries. How important was it for you? And you, you just spoke on it, but if you can um, expand it a little more for us, how important was it for you and for entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, period, to set boundaries for yourself the boundaries for yourself, family, friends, and like you said, self-care. How important was that? And how did you, how were you able to create that particular system? That was really everything. I mean, boundaries really kind of began it. I, I really just came from a place of like, okay, let's just pretend for a second that, because I didn't, I wasn't married to what I was doing, right? I was doing, you know, wedding rentals and a little bit of floral design. And I wasn't, I was always feeling honestly, like a little bit of a, like, how did I get in this industry? (laughs) There are people in the wedding industry who would, who just, they just love it so much. They just ooze, you know, design and color palette and, and, you know, they know all the names of the flowers. I don't know any of that stuff. I just, I don't, (laughs) and I don't care. Um, I was able to kind of hone a craft for it. I've always had, um, you know, an eye for aesthetics and, um, you know, I know what looks good and I, I can put a color palette together. I can, I can make something look nice, but I, I'm not professionally trained. I don't have the certification. So I always just kind of felt like, what am I doing here? Like there are people here that if you told them they could never touch a flower again, they'd be like, well, end it now then, because my life is over if I can't touch flowers. And I am like, I'm really fine if I never touch one again. So I just (laughs) felt like a fish out of water, but, um, I just started asking myself, let me just take the job aside for a second. If I had a bank account filled with money and no one was depending on me, how would I want to spend my time? Like, what would I want to do? And I thought, well, gosh, I'd want to get up early. And I'd never been a morning person before ever. You know how we have those things where we're like, man, that I, in, my, in, my, in the v- version of my best self that I envision <laughs> for myself, I do yoga and drink green tea, you know, but in reality, like you're not doing that. Okay. So in my dream version, I was waking up at 5am and, um, I was having time to myself before my family woke up 
And um, then I would make breakfast for my family. I would get them ready. I would get myself ready. I would take my children to school and then I would go work. And then I would pick my children up from school. And my, my, my kind of vision was that when I left work, I was really done with work. Like I was, I wouldn't see it again until the next day. Mm -hmm. And so, and my father had said something to me. So my, I come from a family of farmers and my dad once said to me, this was during the days that I, you know, we've all been there where you wake up and before you even rub your eyes, you're getting your phone to see (laughs) what you missed. And you are going to bed with that laptop in your lap and you fall asleep, you know, head to the keyboard, you know, that this was during those days. And, um, I had, I had a few years like that, but my dad said to me, you know, there's a reason that God, uh, made the sun and that, uh, that it rises and it sets every day. And he said, you know, as a farmer, uh, you can only work when the sun's up. So when the sun rises, we get up, we work. And when it sets, we go in and we eat dinner and we're with our family and we rest and we get a good night's sleep, you know, um, and all of these things. And he said, uh, there's a reason for that. You know, your body needs time to recharge and it needs time to think about something besides just work because you're going to get better ideas if you, you know, are involved in something else. So that really hit me. And then I started to, like I said, write down all the things. What would I do if I, you know, had all the money in the world and no one depended on me? And so then I just started to say, okay, how can I make the business that I have make, you know, fit in with these boundaries? And I decided that I would make these boundaries black and white, not gray. If you, if you look at, because I studied successful people, And if you look at the habits of successful people in business, it is black and white, black and white. There's no gray area. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to wake up at five. I'm going to train myself, figure it out, train myself. I'm going to have my time. I'm going to get my kids ready for school, myself ready. I'm going to take them to school. I'm going to work from 830 to three. And then at three o'clock, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go, you know, pick them up and I'm going to be with them. So at three o'clock every day, I shut down my computer and I never opened it again, anything to do with work until the next day at 830. Hmm. Email is off. I I don't have email on my phone, you know, all those things. And people ask like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. First of all, if you have everything in place, like you should, like I was talking about your onboarding process, your, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, your automatic email that explains when they'll hear back from you or whatever. You don't need to worry about it. You're okay. You've, you've explained all people get anxious about is when they don't know what to expect. So you have to set clear expectations, right. For your clients or for vendors or whoever it is that you're working with. And then, um, so I was able to do that and I, I, I had to change my business to where it wasn't rentals, but it was just um, floral. And so I did floral and wedding planning because I could do that by appointment only. And my business grew very quickly. And I think there's something about listening to what you really want outside of business and then getting your business to fit into the life you want, not the other way around. Mm. So two things. Your father, very wise man. <laughs> very, very, yes. <laughs> and then the second thing, the last thing, the very last thing you just said, have your business fit inside your life, not your life inside your business. Mm-hmm. As entrepreneurs, we do that so often. As I was reading your blog, I I literally laugh out loud to myself because I'm like, why does that sound like me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> We're but, just so hungry. We go into it with with all the good intentions. Yeah. We really do all of us. We no one goes into it wanting to work 16 hours a day or never spending time with family or or waking up with a phone and falling asleep on a laptop. None of us go into it like that. Right. But we just don't we don't have a foundation of brick. You know, we don't have that solid foundation. And right. until we get that, we are always going to be, you know, on that hamster wheel. Always always uh because when you were saying you had you have your daughter and then you have your two twin your two twin boys who are four my son is five yes and (laughs) just imagine two of them oh (laughs) (laughs) i just did wait (laughs) (laughs) 
I know, I know. Oh. <laughs> so I first off, I commend you on that one. I'm clapping because that <laughs> and and him being five, he he's 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 awesome because the only thing he knows is an entre- a mommy entrepreneur. And so when I'm, when I'm in the middle of trainings or right before training, I say, okay, mommy has to do training. He says, okay, so you want me to be very quiet? I was like, yes. And then afterwards, when I'm finished, he's like, mommy, I was quiet. I was like, yes, you are. He go, he'll go, mommy, are you finished? And I'm like, yes. And he'll go like, woo. <laughs> yes, so excited. Yes, absolutely. It, yes. And it, 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 but it took me a while to get to that point. Like you said, you have to have the boundaries. And one of the things that Antonio taught me was you incorporate. And so when he was really young, I started incorporating him with what I'm doing. And so now that he's five, he knows the difference. And there's even times where I may be um, doing a, a one-on-one coaching session. And at the end of the session, I don't know how he knows, but somehow he always knows when I'm closing it out or winding it down. And he'll, he'll go, mommy, are you finished? And they'll hear him in the background. And they're like, hey, is that is, you know, they'll call it, call his name. And he'll come into the Karen wave and but to to have that balance to have to have those borders is extremely important and that's for entrepreneurs who are parents or parentpreneurs or just those who are single and entrepreneurs it's still it's still important to have those borders because like you said in your blog you have to have a life outside of your business Mm -hmm. and here's the other thing that i think is so crucial that we have to remember is that what we are doing the, the, the best way that we are showing our children what their life looks like or what their future looks like is through the example we give them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what we say, really. It is the example that we show. So if they see mommy going to work every night with, I mean, going to bed every night with laptop and saying, I'm working, or if they see, you know, me uh, at dinner time checking my phone, or whatever, they are going to think, oh, that's what life is. That's mm-hmm. what I'm supposed to do when I get older. And I think, okay, do I want this that kind of life for my kids? Do I want them going to sleep with a laptop? Do I want them not engaging with their family at the dinner table, but, you know, standing up, eating, you know, from a paper bag and looking at their phone? No, I don't want that for them. So it's my job to be an example of what, of what an actual like present, um, um, intentional life is. And that is the thing about it. It really has to be intentional. And I can kind of give you an example if you want about our day today. Please. So far, but, um, but it is with such intention. So this morning I woke up at five and, um, I, you know, made myself my, my morning drink. I kind of did my, my meditation and, um, I did a a devotional and I just kind of sat there and, you know, I turn on music and I have a certain candle, a scent, you know, I really want to have an environment and I take this really seriously because um, that is something that I can control in a way for my family. I can control the fact of whether they wake up to mass chaos and, you know, a dirty home with a television blaring and hurry, hurry, eat this. We got to go. You know, I can, or a more calm and beautiful way of waking up. Mm. So I have the candle and I have the, you know, the, the music playing. And, um, then I go gently, you know, Brian, well, Brian wakes up around six. We have about 30 minutes together. And then about six 30, we go wake up the kids they wake up, they're hearing the nice music, they're smelling the nice candle, and then they come eat breakfast. And then, you know, we get dressed and ready for the day. Nothing's rushed. But all of this is very intentional. This isn't something that just happens. We have to make the effort every day. You know, and then um, as we're recording this, we're in the middle of COVID. So the kids are home, you know, with me um, Mm -hmm. all day. But so I, you know, made a a very loose schedule for them to do um, and still had some music on in the background, everything, no TV. Um, Then they went and rode bikes with their dad and um, you know, just they'll come back and we'll have music and I'll, I'll change it to a different scent, you know, like in the morning it's more um, 
just calming and it's calm music. And in the afternoon, it's more, you know, it's a fun kind of pick me up music mm -hmm. and everything. And it's just gently playing in the background. So it's just, I'm able to kind of create this environment for them um, that really allows them to kind of move through their day, um, you know, a little bit more calmly, I really do believe. And so, um, but it is intentional and you have to make the effort. And it's the same with business. If you want your business to look different, you have to intentionally make that effort. It is not just going to happen. Wow. I, I love that. I love how you start your day. Cause while you're, while you're saying that I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm thinking about the days that I started off with my son in a calm way versus the days I started it off with a rushed way and how it affects him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Cause you helped me pinpoint. Cause I was, I was, I've been trying to figure out, okay, so why is today so different from yesterday? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have those all the time where I was just like, what is the deal? And then finally it dawned on me and I just was like, Oh, that is something I can actually create for them mm -hmm. is this calm environment because it goes back to what I was saying about what example am I showing them of how a life can be lived I don't want them to think that that's how life is that you wake up and you rush and you're eating a granola bar in the car while you tie your shoes like that's not life right. you know and if we make the effort it can really be such more beautifully spent mm -hmm. yes thank you very much so for our listeners start your day calmly whether you have children or not and the rest of your day will follow that same vibration but you have to be intentional <laughs> yes yes and i would really encourage you to to try your best those last couple hours before you go to bed to not look at a screen at all i know that's so hard <laughs> I, get it. I know it is but here's the thing so many times people are looking at Pinterest or Instagram or their competitors or whatever for quote inspiration mm -hmm. you know, for their own business. And I am here to tell you everything you need to know for your business is inside of you. And you cannot find that until you are still, until you are quiet, until you, you know, uh, until you stop constantly numbing yourself because that's what you're doing when you are constantly um uh watching something on a screen you're numbing yourself because you're you're um turning off basically your own brain of thinking and when you will go on a walk i believe your mind your body and your spirit are connected and if something is missing like if i am trying to write a blog and there's just I'm just word block after word block I just can't do it um if I will go for a walk I mean the whole thing writes itself it all just comes to me and I'm able to walk back in and write that thing in five minutes and it's done you know if I try to go on a run and like my body just won't move if I will sit and be still and you know meditate and to me all meditation is is passive prayer that's how I I look at it it's when we actively pray we are talking you know we're we're the one doing all the talking all the asking all the speaking <laughs> and passive prayer is just really taking the time to listen and just mm -hmm. take a few deep breaths and not that you're going to hear anything but it's like uh, the the there it's just that answers start to come like for me it's things that i were was questioning i no longer am questioning all the time it's like a mm -hmm. it's like more of a piece um so i find that when i do those things the other thing that was so hard starts to become very easy. So that's why I think it's just really important to give your, and I do that with my kids too. Uh, right now, they, they usually get about an hour of screen time a day, whether that's TV or iPad or whatever. So right now I'm doing this uh, podcast with you. So they are getting their iPads while I do this. I told them when this is over, iPads go up and there's no <laughs> TV tonight nothing you know you this is your screen time we're gonna spin and they went oh mom and i was like listen this evening will be good we're gonna we're gonna quiet our brains because that's where the real creativity is you know it's down mm -hmm. deep in us and we can't get that if we're constantly you know being um numbed by other things so i even try to right. teach that to them now because we just live in such a a screen world 
Yes. Yes, we do. I, my five-year-old knows how to work his iPad perfectly. <laughs> so, yeah. And so what I've, um, what I've talked to him about, and at first he was like, I don't want to, but then one day he was like, mommy, when are you going to put my, my school on my tablet for me? And I was like, okay, so we're getting there because my, my thought process was you spend so much time on there when I'm working, you're on there. So why not put something on there that's educational for you? But was, and also listening to you, s- spread that out. Don't let him spend all day on his iPad. <laughs> right. You know, totally. And, and he loves, he, he actually loves learning. He yeah. loves writing. He loves coloring anything that, you know, he loves puzzles, which is something that really, it took me, he's been doing puzzles on his, te- he started on my, on my laptop and now he, I, I put the same program on his tablet for him and he'll sit there and he'll do puzzles all day, the, the jigsaw puzzles, you know, but what you're saying, you, when you set those borders, like you said, you create, you create that, you build, you build around, you build your business around your life and not build your life around your business. Absolutely. Yes. So the, so the borders are definitely, definitely something that us as entrepreneurs, it's extremely important for us to set in place. Absolutely. Now at the beginning, you said that you went to seminars, webinars, you sat, you spoke with all kinds of professionals in different, um, in different fields. You sat with accountants. So with all of that knowledge that you, you received from them, how did you take your business? Cause you also mentioned, you know, businesses, most businesses don't survive within the first five years and you, you were determined for yours to survive past the first five years. And then you also got to a point where it was either, business or bust yeah totally so so all that knowledge that you received from all these different areas how did you put that together and apply it because I also heard you speak about putting systems together like an onboarding system so how did you apply all that to your business to grow it to where it is today everything was really simple I mean everyone I talked to it was it, it there was a commonality you know between it it was it was you know let's get you've got to get the basics set up which mm-hmm. means you know you've got to and we and i get it because i used to be there you think that you don't have money to pay for someone else right that you have to do it all yourself a solopreneur yeah. and the truth is is that if you can find someone to you know uh to do like an admin assistant to help with emails or something like that um and, and let's just say you you just start out with giving them you know 15 hours a week or something like that you know um and they kind of start to handle you can train them on the you know just the stuff just the minutia <laughs> stuff. and um and then they can begin to help you write email templates or whatever it is um you know that frees you up all this time to then do these other things right Um, Mm -hmm. I learned that I have, you know, a a set of strengths. We all have a set of strengths. Um, I love, 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 uh, strength finders. You can just Google strength finders and you'll find it. Um, but, uh, my, I believe that we're all born with, with these, with strengths that were, you know, God given they're woven into our DNA. It, and the reason why, so when you are, working but you're using those those you know god-given strengths it doesn't feel like work that's why you hear people say i don't feel like i've ever worked a day in my life it's because every day they get to use what they're naturally good at doing Mm -hmm. and then the beautiful thing about that is there's all these people in the world who have different strengths than you so i just looked at that and i went okay wait a minute so if i've got these five strengths and then i hire this admin assistant and she's got these five strengths Now the business is stronger and I'm making more money. And then I thought, well, I want to hire someone else who has five more strengths. You know what I mean? The more Mm -hmm. strengths that I can bring on my team, the better this business is going to be, the more profitable it's going to be, the more everyone's going to make and all of those things. And so I just became again, really intentional. Um, I started looking at roles the business needed, not people. Hmm. So even if you are in a business and you have employees, 
just pretend like you don't have them. Okay. Pretend like, don't, don't call them by name when you're doing this exercise, you need to, because, because if you, if you look at them as a person, you will automatically just try to like give that role, the things, you know, they'd be good at or whatever. That's not how business works. What you need to do is pretend like you have no employees and then go, okay, my name is Jessica. I'm the owner of this business. My strengths are positivity, futuristic, yada, yada. So I um, need to be the voice and face of this business. I need to be the one to think of the ideas. I need to be the one to kind of plan out what we're going to do, but I need other people to handle the everyday stuff because I'm such a forward thinker. So, um, okay. So I need someone to handle email. Okay. So what's, what, what strengths does that person need and what, what all, you know, uh, job descriptions are, or I guess duties are within, um, that admin assistant role. And so for us, we call it head of operations because she basically operates like any kind of logistics. So like scheduling this with you today, she handled, she handles the emails, she handles figuring out, you know, um, letting me know when payroll is due or something like that. You know what I mean? She, she handles all the meetings and everything. So she is like head of operations. So if I get a, an email from someone saying, Hey, could you do this or whatever? I know exactly who to forward that email to who can handle it. And I don't even have to worry about it. It takes two seconds. I can get that off my plate. Now I've got someone else who helps me with, you know, with another big, you know, uh, long game kind of plan. She's a launch strategist. And so anytime I've got a question about, you know, Hey, what are we going to do? We need to run ads for this, or do we need to, uh, you know, should we do a webinar for this launch or should we try a challenge or, you know, whatever, I'm going to talk to her about it. I've got someone who helps me, um, get my words to the screen, meaning I will have a conversation with her and I will, um, uh, tell her this is what I, just like I'm doing with you. And it's almost mm -hmm. like she transcribes this right. And puts it into, you know, for my podcast, mm -hmm. you know, she'll transcribe what I say and, and make like a, um, a blog post about my podcast that I just did or something so that, um, and then we have someone who she handles anytime we get, you know, uh, press or uh, we need an update on the website. She handles that. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like anytime something comes up, I just need to outsource it. Like, so if I can do that, then I've got all this time to come up with the ideas and, and to, you know, um, I just also have to make sure everybody's good, you know? <laughs> um, but that's, that's a strength of mine is management. And so, um, you know, I forgot what the original question was, but <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're doing wonderful. We were talking about systems, but you're doing wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, just having a team and I slowly built that. That was not overnight. Um, and I slowly built it with commission because I didn't have the money up front. Oh. And so it was like, oh, well, if we make this, this sale, then you'll get 10%, you'll get 5%, whatever it was, you know? Um, and I still work off commission for anybody who helps me with course stuff. Um, you know, they, they just work off commission um, because I don't know what we're going to make, you know, until it's over. And so that way the money is guaranteed on my end. I mean, there's just so many things that I learned. Um, I don't pay people hourly. I mean, even if you've got someone who hourly is just going to kill you. I mean, what on earth is anyone's um, incentive to get done? working hourly, they're going to drag that stuff out as long as they can. And as yes. a business owner, it is really difficult because you never know how long someone's going to take. So I was in the event world. So I started paying a day rate versus um, an hourly rate. And now I pay, you know, for example, if you have, um, let's just say you need to start out and you need to hire an admin assistant and you're, you're like, okay, I can, I can only pay a hundred dollars a week. Okay. So let's just pretend that you're going to say to them, Hey, I'm going to pay you 10. Uh, it, we, I expect you to work 10 hours a week. That's $10 an hour. Um, and so you'll get a hundred bucks a week. Um, but listen, if you get all that done in, you know, five hours, then you've made 20 bucks an hour, then it's up to them. You know what I mean? How efficient they become. Gotcha. Um, so then, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, 400 bucks a month is coming out of your pocket. And that's something you can budget for. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I talk about that a lot in my program, Know Your Numbers, A Guide to Your Best Year. Um, I, I, I really, I figured out, I learned from these people and then I just figured out how to teach it in, uh, in a way that is not complicated, like just really simple. Um, I, I have a student who her husband is a CPA and he had tried over and over again to do a budget spreadsheet with her. And she was just like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And she did my program and she was like, this all makes sense to me. We just speak a different language, creative right. people, entrepreneurs. We, we speak a different language. And so I think that that's what I did is I was able to kind of take all the education I learned and wrap it into a language that creative entrepreneurs can understand. Awesome. That is great because there are, when you talked about the strength, the strength finders, I, I took it and I find myself at times in business, like, okay, I'm, I, I'm the, I have futuristic I have positivity, empathy, <laughs> you know, yes. I have all of that. So when it comes down to, okay, where do we go from here? Cause I have it all together. And, and it's like, it's like, okay, so I have to, I have to put it together. I have to execute <laughs> this and do that. And then I, um, I now have a business partner. And so she's the doer. She's, she's, she says, just give it to me. I got it done. So I'll come up with everything. And I'm like, How, what do you think? She's like, it's great. Tell me what to do. I'm like, yep. okay, awesome. Yep. <laughs> you know, it, we do it. And there are people who love that. And I think sometimes we yes. think, cause we don't love it. We're like, uh, we, we feel bad handing it off or something. Exactly. There are people who love it. Love it. And so we just have to remember that you just, they're out there. You just have to find the people who love, who have those strengths. Exactly. Exactly. So, so with every, with everything that we've discussed this evening, there's two more things that I want to ask you about. Let's do it. So you say that you have a simple cash generating strategy that we won't believe works. Can you go into that for us? Sure. So it is Pinterest. Um, oh. I have a program called the power of pinning and that Pinterest is such a money maker. I get so many contacts that lead to sales, views on my website that lead to students, you know, and all of this comes from Pinterest. Um, and Pinterest is free. This is the beauty. So a lot of people invest money in Facebook ads and, you know, um, and, and that kind of thing are still even like print ads and blog ads and all that. But for me, here's the beautiful thing about Pinterest. So people go onto Pinterest, not expecting to buy anything, but they're looking for something specific. Pinterest is a visual search engine. So it's just like Google. People use it just like Google, but they are just getting visual inspiration. Let me give you an example. So, and, and it's almost like a sneaky, but it's not sneaky, but it kind of feels like it. Um, <laughs> little uh, marketing trick where someone is just so excited and they're going to buy it. And they didn't go into pin. Like I never go into Pinterest with the intention of buying anything. Right. Mm -hmm. I might go. Uh, so the other day, my daughter, uh, she needed this like enamel pin, like a specific enamel pin for her bag or something. And I, um, it was like for, for a class. And so anyway, she had to have it anyway. So I am looking for it on Google. Can't find anything. Can't find anything. So I look for it on Pinterest because I don't even know if this thing exists. I looked on Amazon, looked on Google, and then I went on Pinterest. And sure enough, this enamel pin shows up. I click on the picture. It leads me to a girl's website. This website, this is the only thing this girl sells is this one <laughs> specific pin. That's it. And she does zero advertising. Like I would have never, if I searched on Google for a year, I probably never would have found it. Um, but it was there on Pinterest. It led that pin led right to her website and I bought it. Now, um, that was clearly something I was looking for just to see if it was available. Right. Because I knew we would need it eventually, but because I found it just right there, I was like, um, yes, I'm getting that yesterday. I went on Pinterest just, just to look cause my daughter's, um, bicycle basket is starting to fall apart. And I was just searching like 
I wonder what all baskets they make now for kids' bikes, you know. And sure enough, this one, like, I just go with the, and I, I know this, and it still gets me. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I, and I even know it. And I'm, and I'm Googling just to get ins, in the inspiration, you know, for when her birthday comes or whatever. But sure enough, I get this picture, and I go, oh, my gosh, that's, exa- like, that's exactly what. I want and who knows if it'll ever be available again or if I'll ever find it again or anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy it now. And that's what happens. And so, um, for example, I have been in the wedding industry for a long time. And so if a bride goes on Pinterest and she is just, she's just searching, she's just getting inspiration for her own little Pinterest wedding board. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she's looking up bridesmaids dress colors. Well, if I have, properly, you know, and I teach this in the power of pinning, labeled my image correctly and done the right keywords and all of that, then my, a picture of mine is going to show up. Now here's the thing. I don't, I don't sell bridesmaids dresses. Um, I do floral design and wedding planning, but someone sees this picture of this bridesmaids dress that they love and holding one of my bouquets. And I'm telling you, we pinned an image in, uh, when was this? Three years ago now, three years ago. I get contacts, inquiries every single week from a picture that I pinned three years ago. So that's the thing. You can set it and then basically forget it. And it continues to generate leads and income. And people will then email me and say, oh my gosh, I love the dress. And I love how the flowers look with the dress. And so how do I, how can I hire you? How can I, you know, do that? And if, 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 listen, if we can do that with flowers, you can do that with anything. I mean, you could do that with, with cooking, with recipes, you can do it with travel. You know, if someone like is looking up a specific city and they're trying to just get inspiration for travel, I went to San Diego in November and I was just looking up, you know, what to do in San Diego. And this one restaurant had properly pinned the restaurant. It was like a hole in the wall, like authentic Mexican restaurant that like, is in, you know, like the worst part of town, but then it has like a line around the door, like two blocks down, you know, like so good. (laughs) And somebody pinned it. And I was like, I got to go there, you know? And Mm -hmm. so I, I would have never gone there had that not shown up on Pinterest. I'm just telling you it's powerful and it's free. Wow. You just have to know what you're doing. And it's, it really is something that you can spend about five minutes a day Mm -hmm. and it can lead to five years of clients. Wow, that is, that is awesome. Because I, I have a Pinterest account, but every now and then I'll go on there. But I'm a foodie, so I'll pin like every meal that looks absolutely scrumptious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I never, but I've never paid attention to that. Because even when you're looking for something in Google and you search it, an, a, a Pinterest link will pop yep. up for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those are people who have properly, yeah, they've properly done the keywords and the SEO and all that. Yeah. Wow. which is great. Yeah. So that is just something as simple as pinches. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time <laughs> for you to start pinning. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I have a free training on that. If your listeners want to check it out, um, awesome. you can go to Jessica Zimmerman.com and, um, yeah, I have a free training on, uh, on the power of pinning. So yeah. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, please take advantage of that though. Stay up to date on your marketing. That is a, a a completely different market that nobody, a completely different audience that nobody thinks about. So please, it's time for you to start thinking thinking about your pinning friends. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then your book. So you, you told us a little bit about it earlier. And um, I would like for you to just give us a few more details about your book and where we can find it. Uh, because you said that you really you really get into the personal aspect of the entrepreneur through your book. So if you can give us a few details about that without giving it all away, because we definitely want them to go purchase the book and read it. Yeah, I'd love to. It's called sleeping with a stranger and it really is just the kind of the personal journey. It's a memoir. It's the personal journey behind, um, you know, just what was happening to me while I was building this business. Um, what kind of killed me, how I kind of got out of it and am at a place where I am today. Um, but it is hard. I mean, it, it talks about, I mean, I, I'm as, as raw and vulnerable and honest as one can be in this. <laughs> I mean, I talk about, you know, my sex life and how that uh, doesn't, you know, when you are 
uh, working all the time, that doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, bode well for the bedroom. Um, you know, and I talk about my relationship with my kids. I talk about my husband's illness. I talk about um, shutting friends out. Um, mm. A lot of times um, as entrepreneurs, we get upset that like friends and family don't understand. Well, why do they not ask about our business? Why do they not, you know, uh, care? They don't care. They've got jobs where they are, they are there from nine to five and then they don't ever want to talk about work again. You know, right. we got to quit taking that so personally. And I took that personally for a long time. And um, anyway, it's just kind of the personal journey behind it. And I think, um, you know, everyone who's read it has said to me, thank you for putting words to my thoughts. Thank you mm. for saying out loud what I would have been too scared to say. Um, and so honestly, I think everything I just was telling you earlier I never really understood why I was in the wedding business. I believe I was in the wedding business so that I could learn about business so that I could share raw and vulnerably about business. And I believe that prepared me to speak vulnerably about my personal life. I believe that um, this right here is my greatest work to date. And it's what I'm most proud of. Wow. Well, congratulations. You can also find that at jessicazimmerman.com. Yes, ma'am, and congratulations on that because one of the my personal journey to become an entrepreneur, we never really think about what we we see the glamour of being an entrepreneur, but we never think about what that person actually goes through on a business or personal level when it comes to building that business. So I want to thank you for being transparent with your memoir and definitely letting us know that because especially um, entrepreneurs in general, but women who have families, being an entrepreneur, they say we already wear a lot of hats. Yeah, we do. But to add the extra hat of being an entrepreneur, it it's something completely, it's, it's ne it's never what you think <laughs> it's going right. to be. So I want to thank you so very much for, you know, writing your memoirs and, and getting, getting deep with us regarding how that really is. Cause not a lot of entrepreneurs do that. They don't want to give the vulnerable side of themselves to show people, look, it's not as easy as you think, but I did it. So you can do it too. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a, it's a calling card of hope for, for all of us, you know, who are both men and women who are, who are like, okay, look, I just, I'm, I'm through. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. This is not what I expected. I'd rather go back to my nine to five, but then deep down inside, they're like, but that's not where I'm meant to be. This is what I'm right. meant to be doing. Yeah. But it just gets so heavy at times having to, having to make the decisions, having to, you know, go through the ups and downs, having to go from, you know, having a business so like you said within five years it's it's shut down or going through that that phase where it's like okay there's growth 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 and then there's a pause because whatever season we're going through so i want to thank you very much miss jessica for you know being transparent and writing your book and i'm definitely looking forward to reading it thank you thank you so much i hope you do yes ma'am so there is a question that i ask each person before um we close out for the podcast okay and i'm ready <laughs> you and you've been saying it the entire time and I hope those of you who are listening were actively listening as Miss Jessica was speaking but to sum it all up Miss Jessica what do you think the true secret to success for you was or is oh gosh I, I honestly think it is you know putting my life before my business and um, putting myself first. So not in a selfish way, but in a, in a way that the most important thing that I do every day is do those three things uh, that are going to connect my mind, body, and spirit. So I'm going to, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do a devotional and I'm going to uh, run. And so I'm going to do those three things. It's going to fill me up and I'm going to be able to give my best to my family and to my team um, and to my business. And then when work is over, work is over. And I'm going to go be present with my family and actually live life and not be too exhausted to not 
do things with them, but to, you know, make dinner, eat around the table, play a game that is, you know, and cause I, I did not live that way for a long time. And it's just, uh, that is, that is my whole goal is that. And I think that honestly, this sounds crazy, but the truth is, is I think when you get your priorities straight, I think the universe kind of starts to line things up for you a little bit. Yes, man, it does not sound crazy at <laughs> all. It really doesn't. <laughs> well, Ms. Jessica, I want to thank you so very much for joining us today on the Secret to Success podcast. It has been a true pleasure speaking with you today. If you can please tell our audience where they can find you. Yes, you can find everything you need to know at jessicazimmerman.com. Awesome. And we, ladies and gentlemen, we will definitely put that in the show notes so you can easily find Miss Jessica. Thank you for joining us for the Secret to Six podcast. Everyone have an amazing, prosperous day. I'm not sure if you already know this, but you're already absolutely perfect. You're already absolutely great. And you're already living in massive abundance. The most important things that you have is not what you have. It's not what you do. It's what you know. Because the people who do know what you need to know to leave the middle class, they're in the top 1% and they control 96% of the world's income. 97% of this world is trading time for money and that is not the way to become rich, it's not the way to become wealthy, and it is absolutely not the way to leave the middle class. There are 7.8 billion people in the world right now and they all wanna learn how to make money and how to leave the middle class. But the way to become a master at anything is to learn all the rules and then bend them to your favor. Right now in this world, there are 2,057 billionaires. Right now. So if you think becoming a billionaire is, a, is it possible, that's 2,057 people that have already proved that impossibility incorrect. And if you think that's crazy, there are 46.8 million millionaires in the world, worldwide right now. Now think about that. 46.8 million millionaires, and that number grows 1,730 millionaires every single day. Money is everywhere. You don't need to max out your credit cards. You don't need to borrow from granddad and grandma. Just look behind me. Look at all the wealth sitting behind me in this junkyard. It's insane how much money is everywhere, and you don't need to go out there and beg, bar, and steal to get it. You just need to know the rules of making money and how to leave the middle class. Essentially, all you need to know is the algorithm of making money, the rules of making money. All you need to know is what to do and how to do it, and you can leave the middle class. Any in industry, yoga, golf, underwater basket weaving, clipping fingernails, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is know how to do it, how to get it done, and then find somebody to teach you how to do it, how to get it done, and you will be able to leave the middle class. If you're not getting my point, it's real simple. Whatever you have up here, as long as you understand the rules of leaving the middle class, as long as you understand how to get money, you can take what's up here and get wealthy for what you already have. Right now, the very thing you know up here is already being searched a thousand times a second on Google. Someone right now, actually 1,730 people right now, are gonna become a millionaire from the stuff that you have in your head. Why can't this be you? I mean, it's 1,730 people with your ideas that are no better than you, that are gonna leave the middle class, become a millionaire. Why are you not next? So how do we do this? How do we take what you know and apply it to objective money-making secrets and then allow you to leave the middle class? How do we take you from where you are and let you escape to where you wanna go? So how do we make all this money or take all this knowledge from the Warren Buffers, from Elon Musk, how do we take everything that everyone before you has done and how do we take all of that and then put it in your head so you can leave a legacy for your family. My name is Antonio T. Smith Jr. 32 years ago, I lived in a trash can. That's right, from six to 14, I had no running water, no electricity, no anything, and somehow I'm in the top 1% today. Not because I had the right background, not because I had a silver spoon in my mouth, simply because being homeless made me learn how to make money. I retired when I was 29 years old, 
I'm more than likely younger than you. I'm one of the top 1% income earners in one of the richest countries in the world. What I learned how to do when I was six years old was learn how to generate enough money to eat some cookies so I wouldn't die to death from starvation. From there, I learned how to go from cookies to a meal, from a meal to clothes, to clothes, to shelter, to everything else that supplied my necessary needs. When I was six, I was forced to learn how to make money. And now that's what I'm gonna do and help you do. I've seen amazing results. I have my own economy. I've homeschooled my own children. And I wrote a book that teaches you every single thing that I know about making money, every single thing that other people know about making money, and most importantly, all the stuff that we don't tell you. Because the truth is, and you know it like I know it, the most honest, the most hardworking, unselfish people on planet Earth live in the middle class. Yet, your honesty, your unselfishness, your devout religion going self is not enough to get to the top 1% and that's not fair. The second half of my life has been not about how much money I make, but how I will be remembered from all the money that I have made. And I've been trying to teach everybody how to get out the middle class. I'm the crazy guy famous on the internet for trying to create 100,000 millionaires. I've created eight so far. I got a ninth one on the way, all the way from India. That's pretty cool. And what I want to tell you is something very simple. It's been hard. It's been absolutely hard to help people leave the middle class, not because of the people, because the system would rather keep you being someone else's money instead of you having your own economy and having the money come find and flow to you. It was frustrating because I knew that anybody can make money. And if you knew what I knew, you would change your life. Over the last few years, I built a large following of over half a million people every month that pay me to actually, for me, to give them advice. Well, that's been exciting for me. And the cool thing is, I've created thousands of six-figure earners. I've created millionaires. I've created people who can live their dreams and hold on to their legacies. And now my eyes are on you to create you to what you need to be great. I have been teaching my principles and these principles to hundreds of thousands of people around the world, every country, all continents, and anyone who has taken them seriously, written them down and applied them, have a 100% success rate of leaving the middle class. I've taught these secrets to my following and my inner network, and I've watched them go from four figures to five figures, five figures to six figures, seven figures all the way to eight. Everything that I've ever learned, everything I've ever learned from millionaire mentors, billionaire mentors, and everything I learned from being the homeless, and everything that got me into the top 1%, I have placed inside of a book. To date, it is the longest book that I've ever written, the most best book that I've ever written, and that book is called The Richest Man and the Trash Can, and I'm offering it to you today for free. This book is gonna show you how to become wealthy into the top 1% and leave the middle class. This book is gonna give you a step-by-step -step plan if you're 30 years old, all the way to 70 years old, how to get into the top 1%. If you're a teenager, how to get to the top 1%. If you're a millennial, how to get to the top 1%. It's gonna teach you how to make six figures immediately, teach you how to get to a million dollars immediately, and all that good stuff. Plus, I'm gonna give you the 36 objective laws of leaving the middle class. Plus, I'm gonna give you every last one of my secrets that have made me rich. You have to understand that leaving the middle class is the most important fight that you're gonna have in your life. And to be honest with you, it, you can kind of relate to this. It almost takes $450,000 a year just to be broke in America. And that's just in America. If you don't leave the middle class, which is actually an illusion, then you are gonna have a really hard time. Think about it for a second. Some of, most of you are gonna be watching this are gonna be baby boomers. And you've been sold a bad check. They lied to you. Your retirement was not enough for you to live comfortable. And I'm gonna give you this book for free so you can figure out how to triple your retirement and then quadruple your retirement. And then as Grant Cardone would say, 10 extra retirement so you can live the life that's worthy of you. I want you to remember that leaving the middle class is the most important battle that you could ever face in your entire life, especially for your family. So consider this video, this book, your friendly tap on the shoulder. I wanna send you a free copy of this book because I believe that abundance is your birthright. I believe that abundance is freedom. And I believe that this book is right for you. In fact, 
I believe in that so much that I will send you the book for free. All you have to do is cover the cost of shipping. I'll eat the cost, I'll take the loss, and all you have to do is get the book and dominate your reality right now and apply the principles so you can be the best person for your life that is yours. Fill out the form sitting right there to the right, Go ahead, dominate your reality. I can't wait to send you my book. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to have you as someone that's been on the journey with me. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better. You can dominate. Young man, rumble the throne is for the taking. The world ain't never seen it before, like Jewish bacon. Put me next to the realest, you see that they faking. I'm dumb on every beat, like God made my brain vacant. I'm coming for the best, this is my notification. I'm independent, like Thomas Jefferson Declaration. Like 1791, this my Haitian revelation. Revolution, we got a problem. Houston, I got a lot of millions and I'm fighting for respect. So put me on all your songs or I'm coming for your neck. Kevin Hart uncle told me I better say it with my chest. So here I go. I want to be the very, very best. No disrespect, but anybody can get it. I'm starving. Major record labels are either struggling artists. I'm something like Joe Button, Eminem mixed with a Martian. And all my flows wet like sprinklers in a garden. Yeah. One new song every day, man, I'm that dope.